Hello everyone. So I want to make this video to um, talk about the high kill run strategy that I made the document that lists pretty much everything that's involved with achieving like the 38k kills or the 40k kills or even what people did for the uh, 52k kill world record currently, which was used using this information from this uh, document as well as my save file. So it's definitely got some credibility behind it in that sense. Um, but there was a question that was brought up, and I think it's pretty good if I, instead of just typing a response, I actually show an example of what I mean, and that's what I'm going to do here. So we're going to do a five minute run through, uh, play through a the first five minutes of a run, talk through it, my decisions, and why I do what I do, as well as the reasons for the way we interact with certain waves on those periods. And that question was mainly the difference between uh, farming and moving and killing as you hunt for shrines. So the I think the confusion comes from is when I said farming, I think that they, the impression is that you just don't move and you're trying to just AFK and farm kills. This is not really the case. If you're familiar with stuff like vampire survivors, you're not, when you're farming kills, you're never really just AFK in a spot. What you're doing is you're moving in a square shape like this, or the more accurate shape would be the, uh, I think it's a rhomboid, where it's like a slightly slanted rectangle. So you're moving like this really. So that way you're covering more ground, but you're moving with the enemy spawns. And that way you're killing enemies as they're spawning off screen, but you're also moving towards the experience that's dropping, so you're collecting it sooner. Uh, this is beneficial for a numerous amount of reasons. One is things are dying sooner. Second is you're also still in some function scouting the map tiny bits to see if there's more shrine spawning, but also because you're moving in the shape and you're moving with the enemy spawns, you're collecting experience sooner so you're leveling faster. For this example, I am going to run Maris, but this is still the same method that you're going to be using on any other character as well. If you go watch Muscardi footage or you go watch Nixie, for example, you will see it's pretty much the same uh, movement pattern. It's just that Maris has infinite pull range, so she has a little bit better efficiency and you're not relying on finding magnets to really excel on the uh, slime waves and stuff. But I'm going to run through now the first five minutes of a run and uh, talk about the key intervals of the waves that I listed for those five minutes, because the first five minutes pretty much set up the rest of the run for you. If you don't hit core blessings by the slime wave, usually I would reset. So for example, if I don't have Maladi, um, I would reset, or if I didn't have Shadow, I would reset. If I got one or the other, depending on the quality of my other blessings and stuff that I've had up to that point, I might continue onto the 12 minute mark and then uh, reset at 12 minutes if I didn't get the other blessing I was missing. But usually it would be having both Melody and Shatter by the four minutes and then reset if I don't have them both. So in the first minute, um, the basic skeletons spawn relatively slowly. So we're just going to turn auto attack on, find where our first projectile fires, and then instantly move in that direction. Try and collect the experience from that as soon as possible. And then not really try ever to backtrack on ourselves. So this is effectively still kind of moving and killing as you have the shrines, but you're still prioritizing the experience that's dropping from enemies more than you are the actual shrines themselves. But uh, this is where the zigzag shape comes in and looking for shrines. So we we'll turn on this, we're going to move up. See the enemies are spawning here, but because this is behind us, we're not going to go backwards. Instead, we're going to zigzag down, move towards the fresh spawns, collect the, uh, ooh, get rid of necromancy. We'll take the soul stealers, move towards the fresh spawns, collect the shrines on the way. Now we can see it's moving up there, so we're going to move upwards. This is now behind us, so we're not going to backtrack down. Instead, we're going to go up this way because there's probably enemies up here. Roll past Chrom, collect, uh, <laughs> we don't want any of these. We'll banish Path of Frost, we'll take Frost Ring because it can activate prerequisites. We don't ever want to backtrack, there are free shrines, we want to go for this one down here first. Since that way we then don't have to double back on ourselves. Go up here, towards the fresh spawns. Uh, nothing fantastic, we've got to roll, hopefully land on time. There we go, Warp Strike. Now, we're going to go up look for the shrine this is another experience shrine. we're actually going to go past it a little bit first and then click it as we're getting out of range just to milk the time from the previous one keep going up 
try and lean towards where most of the gems are coming from. Take one point of force. There's no shrines on the map right now, so there's no incentive just to run in a straight line. So instead, we're going to zigzag towards where the spawns are coming from. Since the way that spawns seem to function within Death Must Die is almost in a, a clock-shaped pattern. So say this is 12 o'clock, this is 6 o'clock. Um, if an enemy spawns at 12, then it's more likely that the next spawn is probably going to be around here. And then it's going to keep going around like this. So if we're killing really, really fast, you should be able to, on the farm waves, move in a shape where you're almost running with the hand of the clock, in a sense. And you would be keeping up with the enemies that are spawning. And you can kind of see that is how it's functioning in a way when uh, you watch where the projectile is firing and when the bounces are occurring. Uh, we're going to, since we only have soul sealers, we're going to spam rerolls now and hopefully land on either two things. One is going to be Master Serendipity or Master Executioner. Or we're going to land on Melody. So we're going to roll. It's Fan Prism. That is neither of the, of the things I just mentioned. We're going to banish it though. We're going to take Mayhem just to get out of the pool. Now that we are at the 1 minute range and the 1 minute 25 area soon, the archers are spawning. We're not going to prioritize killing the archers. We're not going to turn auto attack off, but we're not going to run at them and focus on getting them down. And the same with Chatty Skeleton. When he spawns, we're not going to focus him down. Two reasons for this. One, it's inefficient to try and sit there and focus one enemy down when we could just be killing more. But two, they don't respawn. Uh, only the basic skeletons of this wave respawn. For this reason, it's less efficient to try and kill something that's not going to respawn and provide more kills per second. Instead, we're just going to focus down the things that will respawn so we can try and milk as much experience per second and kills per seconds in the earlier parts of the run as well. The skele the archers will eventually die anyway due to bouncing. So we're going to move and kill as we're doing this. You can see the density is picking up. And the things that we're ignoring behind us are getting pushed in front of us. Okay, yeah, we're going to take the novice execution. There's the chatty. We don't really care about him. We're just going to keep following the same zigzag pattern that we have been doing. Got a shrine up here. The benefits of doing zigzags when looking for shrines is if you just ran in a straight line, there's potentially stuff slightly outside of what you would usually be your, um, your usual radius of uh, rendering. By zigzagging, you're covering slightly more ground and potentially forcing more shrines to come into existence. So we'll collect all the shrines, keep zigzagging. Now obviously doing this as melee is slightly harder since you have to collect the uh, experiences that's dropping as well. But that's where pool area on gear is actually kind of decent. That's why I have quite a lot on Nixie and Avaron, for example. But luck is also very important because magnets. Same thing with the Elite, now that we're at the two minute mark. Uh, the Elite Knight spawns at 206. Although he does drop a Blessing Chest, he doesn't respawn as well. So we could technically focus him down, get the chest, or we can kill off these skeletons here, force more of these to spawn, and passively kill the Skeleton Knight and get our uh, Blessing Chest from him anyway. So we're just going to do that. Now that we've got gem high, it becomes even more efficient to do so as well. Just walk around, kite him, and focus down the other skeletons where we can. But not really getting much, so we're going to alteration. Gonna reroll, roll, reroll, and we're sad. So execution. Take well. And you can tell here, just from our shrines, they haven't been fantastic. So if we just purely focused on finding shrines over collecting experience, the amount of blessings we have in comparison to the shrine power over here, significantly better for us than it is than if we had, like, say, an extra 4.8% attack damage from finding one extra shrine by this point. This isn't to say that shrines can't be powerful, but on average, you're going to find better blessings than you would shrines in the early game. We've got two shrine options here. We're going to go for the one that's below us first, so that way we can not have to back on ourselves later. See the troll. Take Splinter. Um, we'll just take Sroll. Armor. Generally, we're shrines, so if they have an offensive option, we're always going to take the offensive option. Zigzag towards this. 
coming up to the three minute mark. The three minute mark doesn't change much really. We're still take that roll on. Uh, we're still just gonna look for shrines whilst kiting and killing enemies. Damage shrine, that's extra nice. But now that we've got to the shield portion, the density is rather low. This is the main reason that we're looking for shrines. Uh, these will just passively die anyway. Pace of time. Still no shadow on Malady, so this is looking closer and closer just to reset if this was an actual attempt. Take that shrine, keep going. We've got enough shrine up here on the map. Take the level up offer. Generally, we always want to take the uh, utility options when it comes to blessings. So if we have to choose between leveling up, say, a Wintertide or a Blight, we're always going to take the Wintertide. Uh, rarity increase on execution is good. Mainly because with stuff like Alteration Ritual, for example, if we roll into a blessing, the utility option is going to do more for us in that regard. And if we increased, say, Blight by an extra 0.3. Look, put more shrines over here. Never, ever, if you're doing high kill runs, or you're doing experience runs, or in general play as well, if you don't need items, you have a generally good build already, do not ever loot uh, graves, do not ever loot fallen heroes, and do not ever loot tombs. They're on average going to give you poor quality items anyway, but also because they have a chance to reduce your luck, it is more harmful to you than it is good. Uh, since reducing your luck directly is reducing the amount of chance of execution, it's directly reducing your chance to proc soul stealers, and then on melee characters it's reducing the chance of you finding stuff like magnets, which is very important. So here in the run at 4 minutes, I don't have Melady, I don't have Shadow, I don't have a decent gem high, I, I have Mayhem which is good, which is nice, but this isn't going to stack very high anyway. And we don't have Blight, so we are pretty poor quality in terms of what blessings we would want to have. So I would reset here, YouTube. But we're going to continue for the next minute anyway, so I can talk about um, after the Green Slimes as well. But we're going to keep circling with the spawns like we usually would in a counterclockwise pattern right now. And uh, yeah, this is generally what I mean by farm, is you're not going to stand still usually. You're going to move in this rectangular type system. We'll take the uh, Adept Blight here. We would prefer having a Master Winter Tide, really. So if we had Melady, it would have the biggest range it could have. Keep going this way. Keep up. I guess it's not really a rhomboid. I can't remember what the shape's actually called, where it's like a rectangle with oval edges. But uh, that's, that's the more accurate description, I guess. Is that a run, boy? I don't know. I'm showing my intelligence right now. So, right now, as well, I suggest also farming. This is what I mean as well. We have an elite summoner over here. He is not going to respawn if we kill him, but he is spawning archers. So instead, we're going to farm the skeletons that do respawn, passively hurt him, and have a chance for him to summon extra kills into the run. Cool, we got my laddie. And you'll see, doing this in a completely terrible RNG run, really, like it hasn't been that fantastic, our kill range is probably going to be around 2.8 by the time we end at the 6 minute. Kill to the bone, that wasn't shadow, big sad. Take the shrine, but also because we're moving in this pattern, we're still able to find shrines, move towards them, and then continue that pattern as well. Take force. I should have banished the warp strike there. Keep moving. And we're at the six minute mark. So, in the six minute mark, I also suggest farming, but the spawns don't actually occur until around 610, if I remember rightly. So, you have like about five seconds to be able to just run and quickly check for some shrines. And then the spawns will occur, and then you would repeat that pattern. 
not focusing the knights like I mentioned before. Instead, you're just going to circle and kill the ads. And then move. And if you see any shrines on the map, basically don't be line to it. Just keep the pan up and slowly work your way down to it. And do that for the rest of the run. That's basically what I mean. Uh, if we press and run, you'll see the kill count will be around 2.8, 2.9, maybe 2.7. Yeah, 2.8-ish. 2. 2. Um, the Just because of the fact that we didn't hit certain key intervals, if we hit the Melody, we hit the Shatter, the more likely what we would hit be around here would be the 3.3 to the 3.5 section, which just exponentially increases how much more kills we're going to be getting because of the fact we're killing more in general early, we're getting more early experience, we're hitting key blessings much sooner, which then just accelerates and carries that momentum over the rest of the run. And that's why kill counts can vary so high. It's because your blessing timings are everything. If you hit your shatters, your melades in like the first minute of the run, you are going to have probably the best kill record you've ever had. Um, and then you pair that with shrine RNG in the periods where you are hunting for shrines, or as you're moving for shrines, I should say you can start to see where the RNG scales and varies will impact every little factor of the run from that point. But on average, you're probably going to be able to easily hit between the 30Ks, between the 40Ks, if you just make sure to have either Melody or Shatter by the four minute period. I hope this has been a little bit insightful. I would do one of these runs for an entire high kill run run where I over explain everything. But uh, the issue with that is, as I just mentioned before, the RNG, my throat, will probably die before I finally get a run that's worth actually fully commentating. <laughs> so, for that reason, I'm going to try and just keep it in broken sections and mainly touch on the points as they come up uh, uh, being questioned in uh, the Discord or on the Reddit, etc. But if this has been insightful, please like, subscribe, etc. You know, or the YouTube algorithm jazz, um, because I think... Having this game have a kind of challenging aspect that you can set yourself in this regard is a lot of fun, and I can't wait to see what someone who's actually good at these style of games comes in and uh, completely shatters the ceiling that has seemingly been reached so far. So thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.